Well, this time we we'll call the order special call meeting of the Beaufort County Board of Commissioners. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move into approving the agenda, and we have one item that needs to be added to our agenda. We do. We need an action item added at the end, uh, just concerning the Eastern Elementary multipurpose room project with the connection to the fire department that we need to share with you. Okay, so just put it right down as a, a going to be a new item, because right. we don't have any action items. Okay. Everybody record that? Okay. All in favor of our agenda? So move, Mr. Chair. Give me a motion. Second. Okay, second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. Uh, at this time, I'm going to uh, go over and ask Mr. Isbell if he would ask Grace on our meal for today. Okay. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we praise and thank you for the privilege of gathering together. We thank you for calling us to leadership, and we pray that we might be uh, very conscious of our responsibilities as leaders in this community, that we might faithfully serve you and the public. We ask that you direct all of our deliberations today and bless this food to strengthen us, that we might continue our service to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Now that we have the meeting call to order, we're going to take a recess. <laughs> so, uh, you know, 15 minutes or whatever it takes, certainly not going to hold you to that. But this time we'll just break to have, uh, have a little bit of lunch, and then we'll come back and start up the presentation. Okay, we're going to bring the meeting back into open session at this time. And the next item, we're going to need to go into closed session so we can discuss some issues uh, on some safety. I move that we go into closed session uh, as allowed by North Carolina General Statute 132-1.7 to prevent the disclosure of sensitive public security information. Okay, do I hear a second? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay, we're in closed session. Okay, we're back in open session now, and Don will continue his capital presentation, and I'll be passing some hard copies around so you'll have something to follow with him. This won't be on the screen, did you say? He, says it was, he said capital is not on the screen. Okay. And the copy that you received in session can go on the front of what you already had. I mean, what you already had can go in the front of what she's handing out. As these come around, you'll see that the first line item is the safety and security piece. And we've got that so that you see the uh, dollar figure that's been drawn down for that. And then I wanted to, that we put page numbers on here. There are a couple things I wanted to point out to you, and you certainly may have some questions beyond uh, what I share with you. The first on page one, as you look at, and again, this is uh, organized in terms of projects, the location what our estimated cost is, then we've got what we're proposing for the capital budget for 2016-17, and then we've tried to look at things that we wanted to at least be on your radar for, two, for the next two to five years, and then a six to ten year window, and as we do this through the years, there'll be more things added to six to ten year, I'm sure, as we go through that. But about midway down your page, we have the replacement of two activity buses. We normally have one of those each year to do the replacement uh, in about a 20-year cycle. But we had an accident with one of the buses this year that was totaled, so there's two buses that need to be replaced. But to give you an idea of how old some of the buses are, the insurance money for that total activity bus tote came in at a grand total of $5,000. Uh, just, we just didn't get very much for it after that was done. Um, so this would be the replacement. And one of the buses that we're looking to replace is a 22-year-old lift bus that stays here at Central Services and it is used by schools if they're doing uh, either ath athletic events that would involve transporting a person who needed the lift or if they were doing a field trip and they had a student that was non-ambulatory or had other reasons to have a lift. So that would be one of the buses and then the replacement of the bus that was damaged. And then system-wide technology is, is really the biggest line item that you see here, uh, $400,000 for everything that uh, Mark Malik is responsible for uh, in the system. As you move through, if you would, over to page two down near the bottom, there's a 55115 
uh, dollar item at Northside High School for replacement of cabinets and tables in labs one, two, three, and four. And these are four classrooms that are science classrooms. And through the years, if, if you know what the science tables look like, they have a, a different type of a countertop. They have sinks and plumbing that's involved with. Over the years, the, the plumbing has rotted the cabinetry and the hardware. And what we want to do is replace the, the science equipment to have it to, to where it needs to be. And we're looking at doing that over a multi-year uh, Span so the, the first request this year would be for 25,000 of that 55 to do what we could with that and then move forward in subsequent years. And then, if you would, over on page four. <coughs> There's a Southside High School project on a repair of the track where it's been damaged by erosion. We're doing significant work this year already in the current capital budget of going back over an area of the track that has had quite a bit of erosion. And Terry, I don't remember how many loads of dirt. There were a couple of hundred loads of... Uh, 300. 300 loads of dirt that have been brought in. That's step one of making sure that the erosion problem is fixed, but we've already had damage done to the track. So after we get the erosion problem solved, we want to go back in and take care of taking care of the damage that was on the track caused by the erosion. And then as you scan down, you'll see that the overall total uh, for the 16-17 request is $1.833 million. That leaves us with a total of two to five with projects that are listed of, of 3,326,580. That number, I'm sure, will change as we go through uh, the next two or three years and we continue to add to that and um, address the, the issues that come up. And then we also wanted to put just the notion of the modular replacements in a couple of our campuses. We have modular units that are well past their active life. Uh, we have, um, have several of those listed. We want to give you the brick and mortar number based on what, if you key in the square footage, the DPI has a calculator that comes in and gives you an idea of what the brick and mortar piece would be. Over on page five, we've got the modular replacements with regard to what metal buildings would be. And that's what we've put in in, in several of the schools uh, recently, or not recently, but in the last uh, six or seven years. The first one, the, the most dire need we feel like we have is at Washington High School, which will be a replacement uh, of a building right now that has eight classrooms with a building that has 12 classrooms just to allow for the extra space that will be needed on that campus. And the modulars obviously come in a little cheaper if they're metal, and we wanted to give you just an idea of what that looked like as we look out from a current to a five-year time, time period. And then finally down at the bottom, as you know, we've had some conversation with uh, performance contracts. In fact, Robert's here from Schneider, and we've talked about different things that need to be done, and we've captured those in one way or another on the capital request. Uh, these items are things that we, want, again, want to have on your radar. And as we look at what the pressing needs are, we always want to go after the things that we feel like are going to capture uh, savings and, and do a quick payback period. Uh, but this is still a, a list of, of items that we want to continue to have some conversations and discussions about. Time frames uh, may vary. The boiler replacement at, at Northside and, and some of those types of things can wait. The building envelope issues at Northside and at uh, Northeast are issues that have come up uh, year after year of things that need to be done. So we'll be coming to you with other project ideas that fall into these areas as well. But that's a quick run through and wanted to certainly give you an, an idea, an opportunity to, to ask any questions that you might have. Uh, I just have one I'm trying to wrap my mind around 300 loads of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to figure that one out. Is that, is that, was, was that some flaw when, when, when the track was, was placed there that near an, uh, a ravine or? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure if I would categorize it as a flaw. Maybe Stan could uh, describe because yes, I'm not sure yes. exactly how it came about. All the stormwater <laughs> runs around the property and they built a track up and it dropped off at about a 45 degree angle down probably 15 foot or maybe 12 foot to the bottom of the ditch and over the years they originally have been solved it to maintain it but it washed away during some time prior to me coming here but what they're doing is cleaning the ditch, straightening it back up because the ditch has become a um, snake ditch and they cleaned it up, straightened it up, we put in the culvert in the 24 inch tile with two drop in the pockets and then covering it back up and grading it below off the end of the field so it would be a much more idle peeling and easier to maintain before they had to push mow that hill because it was too big of a slope to mow so it will be better for all. But they installed the pipe and they're hauling dirt as we speak. What's going to stop the erosion? What have you We've leveled it off and done it and graded it and so we will no longer have that slope. We've made it flat level and all the water goes through a, a pipe. 
that's on the that is on the west end of that field, isn't it? Mm -hmm. no? Yes. 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 Yeah, Northwest. West end of that. Didn't we look at that about two years ago? Yes, sir. It was an approved project. It's, it's done. That's being done now. It was already funded. I got another question. I'm watching the high school with, with, with replace these modules. Twelve classrooms. Is that correct? Right? Yes, sir. The, the current building has eight. They have eight in it now. That's right. And the DPS, DPS, uh, would, they require a certain square footage for people. Is, is this one of their doings that you increased by four? Well, we're looking at size in terms of where we're at right now with capacity and, and the enrollment numbers. We're going to add 155 students on that campus. Uh, uh, some of those students will go to early college and, and possibly to the uh, regional school in, in uh, Jamesville. But um, we'll, the student, we're already well beyond capacity at Washington, and that provides four additional classroom spaces. Why can't some of these students be transferred to other schools that are half empty? Well, in enrollment management, I think, is one of the conversations that we've got mm -hmm. to have in terms of what we do. The, the topic of redistricting, I think, comes up, and, and there are strong feelings on both sides of that. One of the things that we've tried to do with the, the two programs that we put in with the governor's money, uh, Southside and Northside, was to try to, to see if there were any students at Washington that were interested in those programs that would uh, choose to go into those uh, program areas to reduce the numbers. But that's certainly an, a, an issue that's at the top of the, the priority piece that we've got to look at. Well, it's cheaper to redistrict than it is to spend all this money. <laughs> so what does the board think? You want the capital and keep the districts like they are? Or do you want to redistrict and save the taxpayers this money? Well, actually, it's a, it's a conversation that's worth having. I, I don't doubt that. But it's a lot more complicated than simply drawing a line and saying that, you know, we can, and I know you're not saying that, and sending high school students to another school because it involves, it would also involve the middle school, all the kids that would fall in that area. So it would then bring into play probably, well, let's just say if we were looking um, from Washington, I guess east is what I'm talking about, yeah, north side, you would, you would bring into play north side, northeast elementary, Bath, so you'd bring in all of those. Uh, how you would get to, to that point with all of the, the parents and, and that would be involved to agree to that might be a long discussion, but it would be one that can be had. No doubt about that. No doubt that you can have it. Uh, in the past, when, it, when we have floated this idea around, typically there was no support for that. There was zero support from the community. So until we can decide on how to sell that plan to the community, if it can even be done, there's no, it doesn't matter what we decide uh, because I guess what I'm saying is we can draw a line, but if they don't go, they don't, they don't You're go. You're saying it's a political issue. I'm not saying it's a political <clears throat> issue. I'm saying people buy homes in one area to go to school there, and when we move their kids to another area, they don't want to sell their house and move to another area. I'm just, I'm just repeating what's been told to me. Virtually every county in North Carolina redistricts in order to balance yeah. the mm -hmm. attendance at the school. Right. It's not fair to ask the taxpayers to spend millions and millions of dollars to build a school and then to say that you guaranteed somebody a school. I don't think that that's the way it works. Yeah, and I don't think that's what, I don't actually think we've actually said that we guarantee anybody a school, but I, I hear what you're saying. You say, you say I didn't say guarantee. I, didn't, they, 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 I said people don't want to change where they're living at and sell their house and move to another area because we moved their kids. That's not saying that I said we guarantee them anything. I haven't said that. Well, that's why we elect a school board to balance these things. As a, as a commissioner, I expect school board mm -hmm. to do the most economical thing for the taxpayers of the county. Okay. Uh, and that's, <laughs> if that's redistricting in order to get the schools properly balanced. See, I happen to know there are 2,000 vacant seats in the schools mm -hmm. in Beaufort County. Uh, and there's 9,000 and something seats available in the schools in Beaufort County that meets all the standards. You've got about 7,000 students. So why should we keep spending the taxpayers' money to force kids into crowded schools when we can spread them out and save that capital? Right. Jack, we, we, may, we, may have, we may have open spaces in high schools, but right. you've also got to look at the feeder schools, the right. elementary middle schools, 
I mean, if, if you redistrict between Bath, or between Washington and Northside, uh, Bath doesn't have the Bath space. Bath doesn't have the room to put the kids. Northside may have the room, same way at Southside. Southside may have the room at the high school, but the Chocolate Primary and Chocolate Middle don't have the school room. So then we'll be building buildings there to accommodate new, new elementary and middle school students there. So, and that's and this, this isn't, I mean, we're just talking about four classrooms. We're talking about what we want to do is get rid of modular buildings that have been there for 25 years that people, that people are falling through the floor of. Right. That is, is what we're wanting to do. And just add, and we're just adding four additional classrooms to the eight that are over, overflowing right now. Well, you know, the fact that those units are completely worn out and need to re be replaced, we're back to the nub of the issue that we've been talking about. And that is, do we spend the capital on this or do we redistrict in order to get the balance within the school system? Keep in mind, you've got 2,000 empty seats in a 7,000 student school system. So this gets to be an easy thing to do when it comes to the taxpayer's money. <laughs> But it's also the taxpayers' children getting quality education and having a decent place to go. You're saying some of these schools are substandard and children no, should not, not be saying, in them. No, well, I'm not saying that. Are you saying to put a pre-K on a bus to ride from Bath to where? What I'm saying is it's up to the school board to balance these things to meet the standards. And what I'm saying is that we don't only be concerned with the monies we have to be concerned with the students getting to school, staying in school, and the parents. So it is a conversation we need, and it may not be now, but you need to be open for our concerns also. Well, before we spend all this money on these units, uh, this capital, th right now is the time to solve this problem because you build those new units and you've wasted money even if you redistrict. So what you're saying is give us the money for the units. We're not going to redistrict is what I'm hearing from the board. And uh, it's up to the taxpayers as, as to how much of that they want to pay for. Uh, and I have a request on the units that are being replaced. I would like to visit those units. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not a school board member. But when, when, I recommend when you start to talk to shipping children all the way across this county, mm -hmm. that you have, to, have your meeting at uh, one of the high schools or the community college or something, because this place won't hold it. Well, and, and the thing that you're talking about, those five units, is even if you started redistricting today, and the possibilities of having lawsuits because of redistricting, those modules will be failed down, and somebody will be hurt you know, before you can you know, sell this thing about redistricting these five children. Well, I want to say one thing. Talking about hauling children across the county is a red herring. We all know that what we're doing is shifting lines. We're not going to be transporting children across the county. That's a red herring to, to inflame the public. What we're talking about is adjusting lines, school district lines. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to go back to uh, what uh, Butch was talking about just so I can understand better. Uh, you're saying, Butch, that if we redistrict, then places like Chocolinity Middle School will not have the capacity to to take the redistricting. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. That's that's that was, that's and, my feeling. That's about mm -hmm. every other middle school would be in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Our high schools are where the crowding problem is. Mm -hmm. No, no. For instance, well, Washington High School is a crowded place. Yes, but Washington is. Yes. For yeah, instance, um, the north side and south side, they're the ones that have the classroom. Right. 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 For instance, what I think Bush was saying, let me just see if I can kind of summarize this. Let's look south of the river. Uh, no one's disputing the fact that there's probably some additional seats at Southside High School. But if you redraw a line to wherever it would need to be, and I, I mean, we can have this conversation. Nobody's saying we can't have a conversation. Is yes, but when you move those kids to Southside High School, you're going to be moving kids as well in those families to other schools. And we already have Chakawinti Primary on that side of the river closed for transfers because of capacity issues mm -hmm. already. Matter of fact, if you look on the Capitol, you'll see it's in our second year plan to try to do something with the modular units there because we also have set two issues at that school in that side of the county. Back, years back, we had a fire and we moved fifth grade off the campus. 
Fifth grade actually belongs in a K-5 setting, not in a middle school setting. We currently are housing those at another place. So it's, in, as I said, when you discuss this, it's a lot more involved than just moving high school students. We would have others as well. Now, if you want to go into the next school and say, well, you have your additional seats at S.W. Snowden in Aurora, certainly I have had this conversation. And we've, had, we've discussed this, and we've had conversations with people. You, you will not, I do not believe, you will get parents to agree to move kids from Washington to Aurora. And you wouldn't want to, to even probably look at that, I don't think. I don't think anybody's even suggesting that. Well, but I, I do hear what he's saying about looking at the lines. And, and we, we can, and we haven't found anyone favorable to that idea. What, what I'm driving at, I guess, at, at, at the bottom of the, of the line will be, if Chalk Wendy Middle School is, is crowded right now, is that correct? Yes. Then as they move out, they're going to, to be in Southside High, yes. High School. So that will decrease the amount of, of seats that we have open for Southside. And that's, population that's tends to, and it tends to fluctuate, yes. But that's still not going to relieve the crowding problem at, at, at Washington High School. Over, the, over the, the long term, it'll, it'll all be a big problem. I think the uh, one of the concerns that a lot of parents would have would be if we kept them, uh, and I'm going to just refer to the Washington students because Washington High School is the most crowded, but if we kept them at Eastern and Taylor and John Small and then at P.S. Jones or by the time they need to go to the high school, we're going to ship them out, I think that's unfair. So what we would do if we redraw that district line, it's not just for high school. Right. It would be also for your 5-year-olds and your 10-year-olds. They would also no, need to go test. there to have the continuity of being with the same kids throughout their education. So that's, that's where we hit a, hit a snag. It's not just by the time you get to the ninth grade, we're going to send you to another high school instead of Washington. It's any family within that line, no matter what age your child is, they're going to go out of their district to go to school. Um, so that's, that, that really is the issue we, we're faced with. And those elementary schools, other than Snowden, which is a great school, <coughs> but it's, it's the furthest away. So, uh, you know, you're talking to you want to put a five-year-old on a bus for 80 minutes in the morning, one way, you know, just to get to kindergarten at Snow. But we have talked about it, obviously, and we'll continue talking about it. It's not something we're ignoring, but that's also not something you're going to jump right in and do and, and be done with it. I think it, it's going to take conversation between us and the commissioners because it's going to take an entire village to sell that. Well, I can agree with what Commissioner Richardson is saying about the dollars versus redistricting. Uh, but when you start dealing with, with parents all over the county that, uh, that don't want redistricting, I think that's the horse of another call. Well, let me just add one. Yes, sir. I, I'm looking at four members from the Washington attendance area. One, Two, three, four. That will not get reelected if you do this. And what will happen if you start re, re moving high school children around this county? What will happen is is those people will leave this board. New people will come on this board and reverse that decision. And it's that simple. They, the parents, parents are not going to let their children be shifted from Washington High School to Southside High School. Uh, and from Washington High School to Northside High School without <coughs> filling the ballot box when the re-election comes. And you can say it's not political all you want to, but it, it is. is political. Mm -hmm. It's just as political as it can be. Well, I'll take the first start redoing district lines in this county uh, and start overturning things that have been in place since I got here 50 years ago. Uh, and, and they were in place before I got here. You, you just, it's, it's going to be really, really difficult politically to do. It's, it's just not, I just don't think the school board will turn over and they will reverse whatever decision the school board makes. I, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Belcher and would also add that I'm the parent of three children in three different Washington schools. And when they go through four schools and end up graduating from P.S. Jones, 
and you're going and a board is going to tell me that those kids are then going to have to leave all of their their friends uh, the social aspect of school is as just important as the cerebral education getting the knowledge part of school in, in, in my mind that's a big part of it and if they go and have to, to learn a new set of kids and anxieties and all that kind of stuff I think it's I think it's unfair I think it's I think it's unfair for us to ask people that are in a five mile area to be able to to change that so I, I'm looking at it from not only a board perspective but also a, a parental uh, uh, perspective and I'll add this and I think uh, Commissioner Booth you were with us at Washington High School with these modular units and you can that was a year ago they won't last five years. <laughs> they're not they're not good they're not good and I know we have two debates uh, do we do we talk about redistricting or do we say let's put the money into making our schools safe let me clear the air on something, just to be sure. I'm not talking about transferring, as some people in here have alluded to, there's a lot of inflammatory t statements have been made in here of transferring students from Washington to Aurora. That is not what we're talking about, just for the record. We're talking about adjusting school lines. We are not talking about some of the things that I've heard from the school board here, which are entirely to inflame the public. Mm -hmm. The question is how much tax money is the public willing to pay in order to keep the situation as it is today when you have 2,000 empty seats in the county and there's plenty of opportunity to adjust school lines so that we do not have to spend this capital and continue to do this. Every school system that I know of in the state of North Carolina adjusts the districts. The law on adjusting the districts is very clear because parents have sued and sued and sued and sued, and that law is very clear as to what the powers of the school board are to do this. The question for these commissioners are, how long are you going to keep abusing the public with overtaxation in order to satisfy a few people whose children are going to a certain <coughs> school who are only going to be there four or five years, and then the whole problem goes away? You know. Are you going to do your job to keep these taxes down, or are you going to keep paying? Can I, can I ask a question? You said you, you started a discussion about uh, redrawing districts. I said, I said we've had a discussion among yeah, ourselves. So, so actually, there's, there's really not been any, any, any work of itself done. But we're my not. question was going to be, what would it look like <laughs> versus the amount of money we're talking about right now? That, I was just trying to... Mm -hmm. Get a comparison after the mm -hmm. You mean what would be the cost of redistricting versus replacing the modular? No, I don't have that feature, but you would have to have a lot of discussion brought into it because of something that we haven't even talked about. It also comes into transportation because whether you think we're just moving them from one school to another or not, that's not entirely true because we have transportation models by the state and efficiency ratings that we have to meet. And every time we lose an efficiency rating, it costs us literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in funds. So it's not a zero cost on one side versus a cost on the other side. And so what you're asking is an excellent question to weigh the, to weigh the differences out. Uh, I, I still will <laughs> echo what other board members have already said. Money is always on everybody's mind. Money is always a concern. But I can assure you as also the parent of kids that went to school here and as a grandparent of kids that are currently going here. Money, when you have these meet, if you were to care it far enough to where you were to have meetings and meet with parents, money is not even going to be in the discussion. That's not going to be the problem that you're going to be facing at all. But I hear what you're saying and while our board has discussed this and we do not feel, and if anyone on the board think is, if this is an incorrect statement, please correct me for the record. If this, this board does not feel that redistricting is in our best interest, but, and I, and I know you don't per se have, you know, will we'll do this to us, but if I'm hearing from your board that you are directing us to look at redistricting the schools, I will carry that conversation back to my board. But we do not feel that redistricting is in the best interest of the children in this county. And my, and my bottom line is this. I prefer to make an informed decision right, right. instead of just a decision. An emotional and decision. That was my purpose. And that was a good question. Well, yeah, that was a good question because as you, I think you realize there's a lot of pieces that fits into it that may drive the cost up. 
but we can well, definitely Hearing what both of that. you gentlemen have we said, can discuss that. I think that it would be in the interest of this board to not fund those modular units, but to fund a study to see what it would look like. Because, as the chairman has said, an informed decision is a whole lot better than any other decision. And until that study is done, mm -hmm. nobody really knows. But the, the unique geographic layout of Dufferin <coughs> County, with a river splitting the county right wide open, makes redistricting difficult. Right, right now, and, and plus, the, the bulk of our county population surrounds the city of Washington. The, our, our schools that have the vacant seats are on the far south end of the county and on the far north end of the county, away from Washington, a, a long ways from Washington. What, what right now, we've got students on Slatestone Road that are five miles from Washington High School that are being bused to Northside. We've got students on the south side, south side of the river that are just a few, five, six miles from Washington High School that are being bused to Southside. How much closer are you going to get? I mean, you're, you're going to end up getting to nothing but the city of Washington going to Washington High School and then bussing everybody else 30, 20, 20 miles, 25 miles away, putting, putting on a bus 45, 50 minutes a day one way. To, if, you, if you get into redistricting. Guys, I can't help but to throw this dart at you, so please don't take it too badly. You're the guys that decided where the schools were built, um, not us. Yeah. <laughs> and not necessarily yeah. these guys here. And Commissioner uh, so Rich, schools built, yeah, we have entirely different When board. schools were built, there was a feasibility study on the projected population <coughs> to help the population. It was a bogus feasibility study. Everything that Jeff Boss done is subject to hey, I'm not criticism of to the I'm, I'm, degree. But it was done. We did exactly what the law said we had to do before that school was built, Mr. Chairman. So I can't help it. The population, nobody else. The bottom line right now is we're not going to solve this right now. That's right. So this is a discussion for a different meeting. You're right. It's something that your board will continue to discuss, mm -hmm. and our board will continue to discuss. <coughs> we can definitely move on. That's exactly right. We can commit the I do have one more question. Yeah. Uh, sure. Commissioner Brand. On the, uh, on the <coughs> replacement modules. Are you going back with the same type of module that you have now, or are you going to have more uh, like what they built out at Eastern Elementary, uh, something like that? It will be a metal, metal building like you see at John Cotton Taylor. And, okay. and, 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 structures. and, and Commissioner Brennan has been in the one at Eastern. It's very nice, isn't it, inside? Well, I mean, it's, it's a metal building, but when you walk inside it, you don't know the difference. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Chairman Langley is correct. We're not going to solve it today, but we will definitely commit to gathering information. Uh, but we're here today simply to lay out what we believe our needs are. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's up to you to decide that. We don't get into making your decisions for you. Chairman Langley, is there a timeline you'd like for us to go back <coughs> as far as looking at something like that, at least having a study that's in the pipeline? Is that something we can discuss later? Well, you know, I, and I'm, and I'm thinking real quick. I don't think you can do it this year. That's that's my honest job. It's, it's, it's just mm -hmm. it's just too close. So the decisions that we have to make, we have to make for this year. But what my suggestion is, is that, that in the in the near future, the the uh, the study should be done. But as far as this this budget cycle, it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. We're not going to build one of those buildings in this year's budget anyway. Right. <laughs> so you do the study so and have it ready for next year. Do the study and have it for us next year. About 1.9. What is 1.8 million? About 1.9 on just logic. 1.9, 5.8. Oh, no, that's 1.305. So that's uh, 1.8 million. That's not going to happen. I mean, that's out of this budget. Okay. So we don't have that. And I'm going to wrap up the capability of pulling that together yeah, and, and getting the information on who does that type of study and what kind of cost we're going to be involved in. Any other capital questions? I just want to, in your, in your system life technology piece, any anticipation on, you know, the governor's come out with some infrastructure, technology infrastructure proposals, when you know what that looked like, you know, any crossover in your country? There may be a lot of that we did with the um, federal R money a few years ago. We did a lot of wireless conversions and pieces of, of technology like that. So we're in a good place as far as that money goes, but we don't know the details yet and, and whether it's going to impact every school and every school district or not. But that, that's uh, pr probably half of, of where we really need to be on the technology side. So uh, there'll, there'll be ample opportunities to, to be able to expend those funds uh, in, in the system-wide technology piece. 
Okay. okay. Can we move forward to uh, local current expense, local appropriation? And I've got that on the Lisa's going to pass out some information. I've put together just a few PowerPoint slides <laughs> just to help frame my thoughts um, and talking points for me, but also for you to see the numbers to, to get an idea of, of, of where we are. Um, we have talked for the last few years within the, the board as we've put our budgets together of where we've been with regards to personnel. And before I say anything else with regards to local appropriation, I want to say thank you to the county commissioners. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the level of support that you've provided to us because you have certainly allowed us to maintain some positions that across the state other school districts have not been able to maintain. We've also been able to use fund balance to take care of that. Uh, this year, as you'll see in just a, in a moment, we've appropriated a million dollars of fund balance in the current year that allowed us to be able to keep some positions on board. We can't continue to do that, and we can't continue to spend fund balance that eventually gets to zero, and then you've got a very tough decision to make. And we're at that point this year where there's some significant cuts in the budget uh, that, that we're going to share with you. But we want to paint the picture for you if you follow along what we've got on the screen here. The current year, 15-16, the budget, our total local operating budget is 14658275 And when you take a look at that, that money, that total is derived from a combination of sources. The local appropriation from our commissioners for 15-16 is $13.233 million. And then you add to that fines and forfeitures, you add interest, and we appropriated uh, a little bit over a million dollars of fund balance to get us to that total number where we are. A couple of things happen each year in terms of, and you've got, you've got that. You got the PowerPoint. You ready for yeah, that? Yeah, it, I'll, I'll send that around. Yeah, I've got a copy of the PowerPoint, it, and it's only about eight slides, so there's not a, a lot there, but you'll have a chance to see that. Um, but things happen each year, and, and this year one of the things that we were dealing with right out of the gate when we start talking about budget was what was going to happen with regards to a pay raise for, for teachers or for uh, state employees across the border or however that works out. And we never know exactly what that's going to be until the budget's passed. We know we have a better idea right now where the governor's ideas are, but we don't know about the Senate and the House for sure. So we, we try to gather as much information as we can so that we put numbers together. Those numbers are realistic and make sense. So the two things that we're looking at in our local budget this year, the first and the foremost, which is over 800000 is a salary and benefit increase. As you all know, if that, if that uh, increase is given to the state employees, we try to pass that on to our locally paid employees. Federal programs pay for it out of their grants, which means that they may have fewer people that they can employ, but we don't pick up the additional cost for that. But then you've got folks that are in different uh, areas that are, that are being paid from different sources. And then the local teacher supplement increase of $100, again, we're asked to include that. So those are the two specific increases, but they're significant because of dollar amounts that are associated with them. When we get into cuts and what we're battling in terms of money that we have to spend, you've heard me talk about low wealth, but I don't know if I've shown you what that graph looks like. There are a couple of other cuts that we're going to get into on the next slide. One of those deals with ADM, our average daily membership. And the state's projecting that our, our student enrollment numbers next year are going to decline by 87 which when you put the dollar figures of everything associated with that, it's about $517,000 less. That's due to decreased enrollment. Low wealth is not related to decreased enrollment. There's a political side to this like there is to just about anything that we talk about. But if you take a look at where we were back in 2006-07 and take a look at where we are in 15-16, we've dropped over a million dollars. And that was a funding source where we had people there. And in some cases, those individuals have been pushed over on the local side. And the point that I want to make is that we can't continue to pay out of local money what we've not been able to pay out of state money. And we just can't, we can't push that responsibility on the commissioners, and we don't have fund balance to do that forever either. And that's why we're in the situation where we are now. If you take a look at the other cuts and reduction, low wealth I showed you, I think we're down projected as about $17,000. Is that right, Lynn? from what we can tell for next year, not a significant cut, but it's big when you look over the last 10 years. The ADM reduction, which I just mentioned to you, is a state reduction. Uh, that impacts state-funded personnel that we, that we wind up having to reduce. Uh, otherwise, we push that to the locals, and the local appropriation has to pick up the tab for that, too, which is, is something that we can't continue to do. The locally funded positions, uh, one of the key positions here are teacher assistants, as you've heard us talk about, with the state funding that's been decreased for teacher assistants, and we've held on to a good number of those positions, but again, that's been done on the local side. 
For us, what we're looking at in this budget are position cuts, and, and this is not always individuals that don't have jobs. We try to go in and do as much of this in attrition as we can. We try to move folks around into open positions, but this year we will very likely have some individuals uh, that may not be employed anymore, but we, we certainly would place as many as we could. 15 teacher assistants, 13 instructional personnel, which will be teachers, and four district positions at Central Services for a total of 32 positions. That will be moving into the 16-17 budget that we have, that, uh, we've, and we'll show you what that dollar figure looks like. What does that equate to? For us, we've had uh, 90 positions that have been cut since 2009. If you do the 32 on top of that, it gets us to 122 positions uh, that have been cut. And again, up until this year, we've been able to deal with that through attrition and be able to place individuals in positions. And, those are, and then we also are proposing a locally funded non-personnel cut. We tried to take a look at our local budget that didn't involve people because we know we, we, that we're dealing with the cut. And then we've also got the benefit and salary increases there. But we tried to make sure that we grabbed as much as we could in terms of tightening the belt on everything that was non-personnel on the local side that we could. And all of those go together to take a look at what we've got. So our proposed budget for the upcoming year will be $14,567,000.18. How does that compare to where we currently are right now? The current budget for 1516 is $14,658,275. So there's actually a reduction in our operating budget of $91,275. And I think if we left it there and, and walked out of the room, we feel like we've, we've reduced our overall operating budget and you know, we have sustained significant cuts but we feel like we've done quite a bit of work. The issue for us is fund balance allocation, and that may trigger another conversation that we need to have, but I wanted to show you what, what the budget request would look like here. If you take a look at the 15-16 adopted budget, and this is just putting numbers behind what was on, pre, on, on the previous slides. The salary and benefit increase and the local supplement increase are additions that we're looking at, and then we've got the reduction of locally funded personnel and the reduction of the locally funded non-personnel costs and that yields a net reduction of a little bit over $91,000 and uh, yields that bottom figure, which is a slightly reduced number for our operating budget. What our proposal includes is that we have that $14.567 million uh, budget request and then take out of that $266,000 for fines and forfeitures, which is uh, lower than what we have in the current year because we're not collecting as many fines and forfeitures, so that projection has been reduced, which would lead a local appropriation of $14.3 million, which is actually an increase of $1,067,000, which is about 8% increase from, from where we were. But that would be the, um, the request in terms of the request made by the school board to the county commissioners. And I know there are probably lots of questions, and we went through that quickly, but I wanted to give you all an opportunity to, to have the floor and ask questions. Questions, commissioners? Yeah, I got one. About the uh, teacher's assistance, uh, when this subject came up last year uh, and the commissioners agreed to supplement the teacher's assistance to keep their job, we, we said at that time that we were giving them a year to, to relocate or find a find new position somewhere. Uh, are they, did you take that in account, in account when you cut these, these assistants out? We have. We've been sharing that message for about three years. We have a letter that goes out. We've got folks that are on expiring contracts. Those would be the individuals that we'd be looking at. Again, we would hope that we'd be able to place existing employees in other positions and then the number that we're looking at, even though positions would be cut, the people that would be out of a job would be as minimal as we can possibly make it. But I, I, I can't honestly say today that we'd be able to find a landing spot for every single employee. But we have gone back and shared that message and said we don't know what's going to happen. And, and this is not an ongoing thing. If you all were to get together and say we want to appropriate extra money to allow those folks to be there, it becomes an annual requirement that you're going to have, and it's an expensive requirement and, and we realize that cuts need to be made I mean we're talking about pushing down to you guys the things that have been done at the state level and and it just is a responsibility that you can't bear so when, when these teachers assistants lose their jobs they, they should not be surprised should not be surprised that's what I'm wanting to know <coughs> won't, be, won't be pleasant by any stretch oh, I'm but, sure but in terms of communication and, and understanding 
In fact, after we meet uh, today, I'm going to meet with all the teacher assistants. I'm trying to work out something next week just to let them know what our budget requests are and the fact that uh, if, it, if this is approved, we're looking at significant 32 cuts, as you saw, that touch every aspect of the school system. How many of those are TAs that, that you have that's eligible for retirement? Do you have any offer? We have five retirements at this point. Okay. So that mean that there may be more than that that come in. But did you count that in your 32? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So that, that's a good, they already counted in the reduction, the five that's going to retire. Yes, sir. That's yeah. above this number. That, that, I'm sorry, that's right. That's above that number. That's, right. that's above. I apologize. Thank you. No, I mean, I, I thought I knew where he was here. Yeah, that's above. Do you know? Let me find all you. All your low-hanging fruit. You can uh, unless more people <laughs> choose to retire in the next month or so. Yes, sir. You know how many county paid t uh, classroom personnel you have at the present time and how many county paid classroom personnel you will have under the new next year we, we, we can pull that number for you if we've been looking at, at classifications of teacher assistance or instructional support we can pull that for you i don't know that we've got it right now. yeah that's fine just yeah. yeah just send it over when you get it but i think mark can you tell the, what the local reduction i think we had that on a sheet the state one the state reduction nine and a half positions eight eight and a half eight and, and a half state. teaching positions uh -huh. so, so that will be uh, four, four, four and a half, half. that'll be from the from the local side it'll be four and a half teachers less than what we have it will be 14 teacher assistants left less than what we have right and then the the uh, district level positions i don't know if all four of those are fully funded some positions are funded some out of state and some out of uh, local but those are four district level positions right. that will be but you'll still give us the total number of personnel that are paid on the county we will and that may change a little bit throughout the year so really it's the snapshot of when you pull yeah. that report but we can do that about eight and a half teachers cut from the state was that because of ADM reduction ADM. yes you're only losing 87 students, though. They're, they're overdoing it, aren't they? Some of this is catching up with what we've been doing, too, that, that where we've covered some state on the local side. We've got to get that corrected because we can't continue uh, to come in with the kind of requests that we've, that we've had to do. Well, when somebody uh, leaves and goes over, just uh, to the, uh, we have to pay our local, the local uh, appropriation for them goes to nurse as well. Okay. So we lose that state. What about money. students that are going to early college? Do you lose them off of your ticket? Mm -hmm. they're, they're still considered our students. Still considered your, is, is that enrollment increasing out there? I know we were having trouble getting up to 150 students. Oh, no, we're, we're, we're pushing near 300. Oh, out there? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And, and has been the, high, the, the highest performing uh, school, high school, middle school, elementary school in northeastern North Carolina. Has, they've done very well, but uh, they, I think they were, were trying to target 50 students per grade level, and they've been able to go up to 60, but the max numbers in terms of facilities and whatnot is going to be 300. Okay. And we've got a long waiting list. Any other questions? Got a question, uh, Jerry. On the uh, last page, you've got salary and benefit increase, $843,000. Mm -hmm. Is that based on the 5% that the governor's talking about, or is that a higher percentage? What we've, what we've done is a 5% for teachers and 3% for non-certified. We've also heard that you may want to bank on 4%. When we ran the 4% numbers, they came out very similar to that. So it's 5% teachers, 3% non-certified. So that number would go down if... Could could go up could go up but uh, could go could go down a little bit. Yeah. But we've, from what we've heard from folks in Raleigh, the politicians and folks in education, that was the number for us to use for planning. And it, it, it and that brings up a really great point. It's difficult to build a budget when you don't know for sure what you've got coming in. And, and you try. You know, I, I don't ever want to give you all the impression that we're padding or that we're coming in high, knowing that we're going to hit it low. I would rather be transparent and then come back afterwards and say this is what's happened in Raleigh, and we need to readdress and, and look at that. But we've, we've talked to lots of folks that uh, are involved in school finance and several folks that are involved in the General Assembly to get an idea of what that number may look like, and, and this is what the planning number is. And that's an excellent question. Also, uh, Commissioner Wars, I was going to bring that up just before we close because they started out with 10 percent. They've been throwing numbers, percentages all the way from 10 percent down, which I don't think any of us believes that's probably what's going to happen. But you can see, but you can see the uncertainty for us. 10 percent would drive that number through the roof. And well, 
we just not sure we're going to be elected. So that's really what's going on. Well, you know, we've actually commented several times, but it's an election year, so you don't ever know. But that's the whole problem. We don't know. <laughs> but that number is probably very close, and I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't go up just a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to make a, a, a just a quick comment about the teacher assistants, um, with, about the teacher assistants, um, and they they are many of them, most of them are year to year contracts, so they they are aware um, every year that this is a, a possibility, and here lately it's been more of a probability, so they understand that. But what we also have to understand is that most of these teacher assistants are not fresh out of high school. They're not fresh out of uh, community college or university. Most of the assistants in our county are older women, a few men, but and they've been doing this for a long time. This is not a new job to them. Most of the assistants are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, some even in their 60s. So uh, even though they know it's a year-to-year -year thing, we are in a climate and not just in our county, but in our country, where if you work really, really hard and you go to work every day and you do all the right things, you may still lose your job. And, and I think that's, that's a sad statement to think because many of these assistants that, that might lose their job have been absolutely devoted to both county schools for many years. And I want to say that there's the not another place for them to go. The bus drivers. Pardon me? I mean, I'm a bus drivers. Not really sure right now, but it wouldn't surprise me that would be a number of them. You have any idea exactly? The majority, the majority would be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're all certainly required to have a bus license. That doesn't mean they're all full-time right. bus drivers in addition to the TAs. And I want to say, too, the value of a teacher assistant is much greater than the salary. Uh, and, and the salary is what we're dealing with in terms of overall numbers. And the only way to know that is to get in the schools and see the kinds of things that they're doing. And I think the days of having somebody that runs copies and puts up bulletin boards and does that type thing, the teacher assistants are in the classroom. They're the right arm of the teacher. They're doing a lot of the, the breakout group work with our students, particularly with the focus on literacy that the state has on, on K-3. We need every, every single one of them in the classroom. Um, and it's, it's just difficult. So when you lose them, you're not losing a non-integral part of the school district. You're losing somebody who's very important. Can I add just one thing? I don't drag this out, but back under, it, they don't have to turn, they don't know where it's at. On page three where it says cuts and reductions, I, I, I can appreciate the way the presentation was put together, and you did mention it, but 13 instructional personnel. Okay, scratch through that and put 13 teachers. That's teachers. 13 what? That's teachers. Instructional personnel is a real fancy name for teachers. Even though we may have people that retire and we may have people that choose to leave for whatever reasons and we transfer people from one place to another, that will still will be 13 teachers less and can affect, I've talked to people at the high school level already about some of this, and it can affect, will affect, possible class <laughs> offerings. There can be classes that we might currently offer as an elective that we will not be able to. And so you also run the danger of having parents not getting for their children what they might be wanting to get if it doesn't become available to us online, which if we run it to an online, it still there's a cost of that too. But the real world side is that is that they actually end up, you lose kids due to not having what they're looking for. Then when they transfer out, if that were to be the case, that money's gone too. So you begin to get in this catch-22 spiral, and it just keeps building upon itself and building upon itself. But I just wanted to make sure that instructional personnel means teachers, people that are teaching our kids today. And what we have to do is go back and, and look at our allocation formula of how we allocate um, teachers. And a lot of that's based on student numbers. There's some guidelines that we have for early grade levels from the state. But then when you get into high school, you know, foreign languages or, or high level of sciences or math, things like that, it may be where we have to start doing more uh, virtual. And we, we have the ability to broadcast, have a teacher at one of our schools to broadcast to the other two. And I think we have to get into more of that to utilize and be as efficient as we can with both people and the equipment that we have. But as one high school principal mentioned to me, find a student that will be successful taking advanced calculus online without a teacher in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's not going to help. That's right. It's not going to, wouldn't for me anyway. <laughs> it wouldn't for me with a teacher in front of me. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I probably wouldn't make it with two teachers in the room. 
But anyway, just something to think about. Well, I'm, I'm not about to when you began your presentation and said thanks to the commissioners. And I'm not, this is not political. This is aid. I'm not up for re-election. <laughs> you and your board have done an outstanding job handling the resources that we have given you. And this is a team effort. We want to thank you for your leadership and your openness that you have done with us. Thank you. And, and if you will listen to our meetings from time to time, I know you got better things to do than listen to our meetings. We seriously, several times, we, we comment and thank you for what you've done for us. You've really stepped up to the plate over and over and over. I, if I have an issue, and I'm not going to say I do on camera, but if I have an issue, it's not with the county. <laughs> state in uh, per pupil uh, expenditure on public schools from county dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it, it has been, uh, from my perspective, a goal of ours to stay in the 25, you know, be in the top 25 in the state if we could. But uh, that, uh, with, with the changes recently, we have, we have moved up mm -hmm. from probably middle 30s up inside, probably I would say, guess, around 30, would you, Jerry? Mm -hmm. About right. Yes. Uh, 30th in the state. Right. And, and for <laughs> Tier 1 County uh, in eastern North Carolina, uh, that's that's pretty good. I was going to tell you, to, if, if you want to know, the last time I checked from a year ago, you actually ranked 27th. 27th. Which is, okay. that's why I just said, I have no issue with the county. <laughs> I mean, this is all, but I also at the state level, they, I, I yep, thought it was bad. At the, at the state bad. last year, they, uh, were, uh, this year they reported 39,000 additional students. So, yeah, you can get a larger pot, but you got more people to divide that pot up in. So. And the course offerings are growing. Yeah. The demand for course offerings are growing at all across the state. You know, the, the big concentration, not just on schools like Nurse, but which is doing great, but. Uh, the students are, are demanding and needing these courses to be competitive to get into universities. Just our state universities have raised the bar. So uh, what you could do at, at any high school in Beaufort County 10 years ago and to get into one of the state universities doesn't even come close now. There are kids that are A students that are scoring high on the SAT and the ACT who can't get into NC State and, and Carolina because they've raised the bar. And, and so I, I feel like it's, it's our duty to continue raising the bar at the high school level, at all the high schools, not just um, early college, which is doing a great job, but all the high schools. We have to keep raising the bar on what we can offer. And it's going to go to a lot of the online uh, courses, but uh, I, don't, I don't ever want us to be satisfied that we're doing enough. Because uh, when one student who's done well through school and scored on the state mandated test what they need to score and they're still being passed over then we haven't done enough right yeah. do we have excuse me go ahead. in in the budget uh process that we'll be in for the next several weeks i'd like to see the uh, maintenance budget total dollars and the capital expenditure total dollars compared with last year and the previous year so two years history and then uh, the proposed. I mean, as a commissioner and a fiduciary responsibility, I'm always concerned about is we add additional operating expenses that's continuous every year. But I know that a lot of times we play around with when, in the budget process with the maintenance budget as well as the capital expenditure. I don't know if we have any reason to, but do we have any numbers on 
the numbers of students that graduate from uh, Buffalo County High School that require remedial instruction at the higher level that they're going to. We, we know from the community college level, and Dr. Tansy said that number has gone down significantly from, I don't know what time frame uh, has been, but fewer students that are going to the community college require remediation to go into the beginning level classes. Uh, I can I'm, I know they've got the statistic because she shared that information with me. I'll, I'll get that for you and share, share right, the numbers. That would be great if you would. Yeah. Yes. Uh, maybe over a period of years. And I'm not sure what kind of data they track, but I'll, I'll see what they've got and share that with you. Anything for commissioners? We entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have a motion to a second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. You're out of your head. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. We're going to hang around just long enough. We got one item to cover for some what is it paying? Stay for this one. I'm meeting with you. Does he have to stay for this one? Our part? Oh, I mean, does he just need the camera running? Or does he need to stop? Okay. Yeah. Since we start with this agenda, we leave. That's fine. Stan can share with you the details of the channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the only item I show is what Dan has as soon as she clears out. He can tell us what it is. Which I don't really enjoy it. Really right it's damn so. <laughs> No. Uh, okay, Stan, we're moving to our first and only action item. And you can explain to us what it is. This is a change order request for Eastern Elementary. Um, this was a request by the fire marshal that was not given to the architects prior to the building being put out for bids. Um, the email got lost or did not get transferred to our architects. Um, we had a meeting with the city and we, we kind of let y'all know about that previously about the, the change order for the um, fire lane to be added right. and this is part of that change order. Um, and we agreed to break the fire lane, I mean the fire lane road out of it and I'll be presenting that to you on May 4th. But this change order is for um, fire department connection change order by um, fire marshal in the amount of 22,370 and in this change order they put a uh, deduct back it to us a credit for us for a change in our code base that was put in the building from what originally was spec until something that was what we about what we currently use the code base so give us a credit of um, $1,780.40. So we are requesting and need approval for a change order to cover um, the fire department connections in the amount of $20,589.91. Okay. How many code. fire department connections are yeah, there? What, what are we talking about here? I don't From know. the Highway 264, a fire main over to the back of the building and the FDC to just run this building alone, this new building. The current system that was around would not put out the water flow that was needed to cover the facility. Even though it's a fully sprinkled building, we couldn't get the GPMs that was required to run the pump. So with this new fire lane, they would set up on the back side of the campus and be able to cover other buildings besides the new building. It's not just for this new building, it's to cover the back side of the campus to give us fire protection if needed. So what what is this twenty some thousand dollars for? Piping. Piping from where to where? From two sixty four to the back of the building to the new proposed driveway. Okay. Um, back flow preventers, um, post indicator valves, hydrants, labor. Okay, so they're they're tying into the water system. They're not just putting in a fire department connection. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, all right. All the way into the school. 
So what was originally designed? They were designed with the Sprinkler building to be sprinkled and used the current FDCs. Mark Yates, in the general note to start with, his note, mm -hmm. and one of our local building officials did not pass that note to the architect. So it was noted prior to construction that we did not need it, but it just didn't get passed and put into it. It would have been an original construction cost. Well, we did something with that one. Didn't we uh, stand with the lane or something? We're going to bring that to you on May 4th. So I made you aware of what was going to be coming. Talk, it was put out for being on May 4th. Okay, and that was the fire lane. He just said he was going to bring it back. He had access to the back side. Well, he said he was going to bring it back to us. All the way down. We've already had that road. I thought we had access around. We had the money. We approved it in the bids. Now we have the bids. 24,000 for the bids. I'm sorry. You have available funds, yes. Well, How much contingency did we have in this well, I don't think we have a choice. We have to do it. I mean, do we have the funds from another source, or do we have the funds because we're under budget on that building? Mm -hmm. It's it's not in that it's mm -hmm. not in that budget. It has to be taken from other source. funds that you've okay. saved from other projects. Out of the fund balance. There yeah. are there are no that I'm aware of. There are no contingency specifically contingency funds built in the project. Mm -hmm. Are there any other overages other than this one? It's no, man, we're close to being finished right. that bit. Just there putting the... That's going to be it. Explain the... I mean, not, not the... I was asking... Explain the fire lane to me again. I thought that we had covered that in a previous meeting. We didn't actually ever take a... I thought we took no, a we, vote. we took a vote to get bids. And, but we haven't approved the bids. See, so that's what you're talking about bringing back. I know I heard it. What was that kind of looking at? Like? 24,000. Okay. Hmm. So we're looking at 44,000 then in all? 24 mm -hmm. for 46. The, 48, wasn't it? 24 and 24? Yeah. Oh, he said 20,000. He said 20,000. Well, I wrote down 22,037. Well, we got a rebate back. I thought he said 20,000. With the rebate. It is 20,000. It was 20,000. So you're right, so you're looking at 44. Seeing I didn't even take calculus. Should have. Should have. That's right. You might have done even better than that. Well, isn't it for you? I mean, if that's what it is, there's no need to look it back up. I, I was just knew we had talked about it, but I didn't know if we'd, we had to approve the bid. Okay. All right. That's fine. So what's the group? Yeah, we need to do that. I don't want to say, what are you thinking? But I was going to say, we have a choice. We can't open the building without it. That's right. I was going to say, we've got the money. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for doing that. Second. We have a motion. Second. 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 Oh, no, not with that. You got a question? Sorry. Not with that. No, okay. Please. Any party opposed since we can't open the building without it? Okay, <laughs> then I guess that's approved. <laughs> going forward, not that we're going to be building anything else for a while, but um, we need to make sure this kind of stuff doesn't happen to us. Thank God we have well, the only way we can do it is we go to each person individually and say, do you have any more comments? We don't think I lost it. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you yeah, you thought the email got lost in, but I ain't calling yeah. so it. Well, yeah. I, oh, I, no need to. I, 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 but whatever, I, I, want us. I would take whatever the fire marshal <laughs> requires. We need to, <laughs> anything else we feel that needs to be. First and foremost, what we look at and make sure we check it all out. Turn the water faucet on, see if you got enough water first. Don, I, the question that I have is, yes, where is the 9,000 vacancies seats in, in, in our system? Well, actually, no, 2,000. I mean, uh, yes, yeah, 2,000. I, I can give you a breakdown of our capacity numbers based on the work that Jimmy Height did to, to show because we use that uh, every day when we're looking at w whether we're closing a school or not. I can give you that breakdown. Was that is the there truly tru tru 2,000? I, I, I can tell you exactly what the number is. Oh. I don't know off the top of my head where it's at. That's a number that's disputed. I don't know exactly the number, but it fluctuates somewhere between a DPI number and a number by Jimmy High. And, right. and that number goes as far as from 1,100 to 2,000. So, you know, this, isn't the, this wasn't the meeting to dig into that and, and still not. Hmm. But, um, yes, I've seen the file. Actually, I have a copy of it as well. And what Don is saying, the high is 2,000 and the low is down here. And I, I do know this number in my head. Out of the 1,100, because I added it up recently for what reason I was looking at that, I don't know. But about 900 of those uh, just revolve around three, about three to four schools. And you can guess which schools those are. 
In other words, it's not spread all over the county like you would think. It's, uh, it's mostly that was, in That was the point I was trying to make. Right. I heard those, you very those, well. Those empty seats are on that end of the county. I heard you very well. The major <laughs> major overage, or I don't know what that's the right word, but the seats are at North Side, South Side, Snowden. Mm -hmm. Are there the any major other seats right uh, action northeast. items? And Northeast had some. That's, that was the four schools. The four schools. I'm sorry. I said, if there are there any other action items? So. Uh, no, actually, I was getting asked, Don, is there anything else? Yes, did you have something on your mind? No, I was just going to okay. motion to just adjourn go. or ask to speak. I got a motion and a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Aye.